Elio Alves. Greetings, my Brian friend. Field. Yes, indeed. How are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing well, thank you. I've just run up and down the stairs a few times just to, you know, just to, <laughs> just because. Yeah. So, uh, right. so Montclair, New Jersey is talking to uh Harlem, New York. To Harlem. To Harlem, mm -hmm. uh, yes, 115th Street. Yes, directly from 115th Street. Fantastic. And, Yes, yes, I can't believe it. What a, it's great to great to great to have you. What a, what a great great surprise. great surprise! Well, I'm, we're delighted you can make it. So you know, we've been Open Studio has been doing I don't know how many live events each week now. Going back, well, we started with just one a week, starting about eight or no, I guess about ten weeks ago, and now I think we're probably doing seven or eight or nine of these things a week. And whether it's Peter Martin at home on, or excuse me, in the studio solo on Friday nights at eight, Omero Labombo has done three, I think, uh, live live at home, sheltering at homes, and yeah. then we've we've done a whole slew of ask of AMAs, right, uh, conversations yeah. with o open studio artists and other artists. Uh, Adam Manis is doing all manner of uh, practicing, you know, gu guided practice sessions at home for the pianists out out there so anyway we we've been getting our chops together our digital chops and and yeah. and del delighted that you were able to join us this evening yeah thank you yeah 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 this is a uh, a pleasure to to finally finally be live i haven't done that many live live things but but this is uh this is well, fun. this is this seems we, to be the. This seems to be what's going on right this now, is, right? This is it, right? I, I mean, <laughs> you know, this, the, this, by the way, is the first one that I've done. So, any for those of yeah. you listening and watch, watching, any mistakes that yeah. get made or any boneheaded things that get said, I take full responsibility. No, I take, um, full, I, I take full responsibility. No, no, I will I, give you full responsibility. All right. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, but we, but what we've been, you know, wanting to do is just get, you know, get all of uh, our artists, the open studio artists, on, and just to talk about, you know, what the heck, you know, their lives are like. What are your lives like these days, you know, in right. this thing? So, so right. I mean, we could start back with the origin story of when you were a small child, or we could start yeah. with <laughs> with what you had for breakfast this morning. I mean, <laughs> no, but we can start right there. I think that's a good question. Like, yeah. what what have I been doing? Like, what 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 we're doing, right, in this new uh, yeah. new environment that uh, is. Um, uh, we're forced to be home, and uh, one way, of course, is 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 a, is a, is a terrible thing that's going on. But it's also, you know, tr trying to use the time to 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 to, have to 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 be a good thing for 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 everybody. For me, like you know, it's a pause in our career, so it's just like it's, it's a like pause. a pause yeah. button. So yeah, no. so I, I'm trying to see from that perspective that it's just like okay, I have time now to look at everything that I'm doing and just like you know, and and uh, really uh, try to um, try to. Uh, be have, have an honest look and 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 I, I have time to practice now and no excuse, yeah. no excuses now yeah and, and when, uh, the, when when was the last gig you had before we were issued the shelter and home sort of directly I, I had a little rec I had a, re a recording in Boston on March 15 ah boy that was getting late that was kind of late yeah that was already like sort of like yeah yeah, yeah. But I think that the gig, a gig, I don't even remember. I think it was the weekend before, and and then I had this recording, and that's it, right? So that's so that's that's uh, March. That's two months ago, right? Uh, yeah. Almost exactly two months. Ago. Yeah. And it's insane, right? I mean, it's crazy. But but. Uh, and you've uh, got you've got kids in the house, right? Teenagers. Yeah. Or, or? yeah, I got teenagers in the house. Uh, seven, yeah. uh, eighteen year old. She just turned eighteen. Yeah. And my uh, small one, uh, my small one, my my youngest one turned thirteen, oh, and and uh, thankfully we were lucky to live in a, in a in a slightly bigger place. So we used to live in the village. There was this really small apartment, ah. a beautiful apartment, beautiful location. But um, <clears throat> now we now we have more um, now we have more space. And thank 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 God, you know. Yeah. And, and we have the park. Nearby uh, Central Park. Yeah, uh, what a gift that is! I, I was there the other day uh, with my daughter, on right right near Museum uh, uh, the Met, 
And oh my God, it was a gorgeous day like like today. And it, the place was packed. It yeah. was packed with people run. I mean, it was, I mean, and people were observing social distancing. Everybody had masks yeah. on. It was really, it was really chill uh, and gorgeous. So, so what I, I see you've got a piano next, next to you there. Is that your yeah. home, home studio practice room? Yeah, that's my little home studio practice room that I have. Uh, of course, I didn't know that this was going to happen. So the piano is pretty out of tune, yeah. but it's, it's okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I finally got my my own. <laughs> I finally got my own room now. I yeah, have yeah. my own here. Nice. Um, what I are you playing? What What are you playing these days at, at home? Is there is there a particular area of your playing? I mean, which is our. I mean, it's funny talking with you and with and with Hutch and 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 Christian last night. And all, I mean, all you guys are so accomplished, Ruben. Uh, but every. Everyone I've talked with and that Peter has talked talked with, man, you guys are going right back to the, you know, s slow practicing scales technique. Anyway, so I'm I'm sure the guys, ev everyone's curious to hear what what you're doing. Well, first of all, I just want to say that, that there are people from London, from Malaysia, from Portugal, Las Vegas, from Brazil. Oh. Oi, tudo bem, tudo bem. Ah, and from Paris. And from and Paris. And from really? Curitiba, from the south of Brazil, uh, so that's that's really cool. Oh, fantastic! I, I, hey, everybody! Thank you, for, thank you for listening. Yeah, and and by the way, thanks for calling that out. <laughs> no, Paleo. I just and if yeah, and no, if, if, if if you guys want to put questions in there, we'll be happy to uh, to yeah. present them to Elio. So, Argentina, we got Houston. All right, Seattle. Seattle, yeah. Uh, I like, and we got a guy from the Alps. So that's that's yeah, cool. from the Alps. That's cool. I mean, what, 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 anyway, Los Angeles, cool. From Geneva, Geneva, Geneva. That's really cool. Anyway, well, you know what's interesting about about that is that when you look at Open Studio, we have members from about a hundred and I think the last count was one hundred and fourteen or so countries around the world. So that's pretty interesting. That's really <laughs> yeah. interesting. Yeah. No, I mean, so just. From a business perspective, but just also from this music. I mean, this music that that we play, right, is a global phenomenon. Right? Yeah, and then sometimes you forget that the internet is actually you actually get that the internet actually goes to all these places. So. <laughs> yeah. so sometimes you kind of forget. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's why yeah. that's what happens, right? People <laughs> all over the world can see it. it anyway, so so I was uh, um, no back to your question. It's funny that you were. Um, yeah, you asked the other guys to uh, what they were doing. You know, you yeah. go back to doing doing your scales and doing your things. Yeah, I went back to some of my uh, transcriptions that I did um, and things that I studied when I was uh, learning how to play. You know, how to improvise and how to how to when I was at Berkeley and you know when I was I went to Berkeley Berkeley College of Music in Boston. So I went back to some of some some transcription transcriptions from that time, and and, uh, and uh, just to kind of re relearn it, you know, because it's like mm -hmm. kind of your perspective. So that's a fun thing to do, like go back to something you study like years, decades ago, and then and then you're like, oh yeah, so you have a completely different perspective. It's, it's a very cool thing. So one of the things is this uh, um, uh, one finger snap, the solo by Herbie, Herbie Hancock, you know, that the beautiful uh, uh, Empire, uh, Empyrean Isles. Empyrean I Islands, yeah, album, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. And it's just unbelievable, you know, of course, yeah. I mean, it goes, okay, well, what am I going to say about Herbie? But, yeah. but you know, uh, so are, are you actually re retranscribing or are you you're looking at the transcriptions that you had done? Yeah, I just look at I'm just learning it. You know, I'm just kind of learning and playing, playing the whole thing. I, I learned once like a long time ago. I'm kind of relearning it, you know, the yeah. whole solo and stuff. Wow. Yes. And, and, and I borrow over the years, I borrow things from it, like many, many things. And I just it, and it's and it's funny because I'm like, wow, that's where that came from. You know, I, I realized right. what, I said, oh right. yeah, I borrowed this from him, and I borrowed this and borrowed that, and and um, you know and that's a, uh, that that's a really interesting point because you know those of us who are non-professional but re relatively accomplished play players, I, I bet there's a bunch on on on, on this uh, 
presentation right now. You know, we go and we tran we transcribe it solo, or we listen yeah. really intensely to a style McCoy or Herbie, or Chick, or Peter Martin. You know, Ayla, yeah, yeah. and 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 we comp like the this a, a specific phrase, right? A specific, um, even yeah. maybe the entire solo. And then you, you sort of wonder, well, you know, how how is that going to affect my playing? Is it going to directly affect my playing, or? Or is it just going to sort of? Am I just going to sort of embody the feel, that sense of timing, the, well, the yeah. voicing? I mean, you learn. We, we we learn by imitation, right? Like in the, in the like a baby learns how to improvise and stuff. Of course, and, and my 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 teacher at the time, uh, his, you know, uh, Don Brown, a fantastic uh, Don Brown. He used to play with Arbeck in the eighties. Yeah, 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 and. Um, and he said, man, check this, check this solo out, transcribe it, and pick the lines that you like the best and try to learn, you know, and all keys and all that. And um, and I said, okay, okay. But yeah. it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's not like you pull those lines, like, directly into your playing, right? That's what, that's no, what I was getting at. It's sort of yeah. like it gets... You you get it into your, into your system, but then when you're actually up there, you know, imp improvising in real time, it sort of it sort of informs your playing, but it's not as if you're copying. You know, yeah. Something. No, every once in a while I'm playing, I play something. Oh, that was from that solo. You know that yeah. you know, and I mean, I'm like that's the kid. it pops into my mind, and 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 it's um, and, and and that's why it's so interesting for me to to relearn it now because I'm you know older older and hopefully wiser <laughs> right now, you know, and and then like oh wow you know and yeah. I see. I see in a different way right now. You know, I see. It is an amazing solo, of course, from the beginning to the end. And and uh, and uh, and Herbie is Herbie, you know. And uh, and uh, it's just. It's so what's your what's your routine like when you get up in the morning? When do you get to the piano? And what's like? Do you have a typical way that you approach the piano each day? Yeah, I try to. Well, I try to have a routine that helps me um, helps me concentrate. Um, you know. In the morning, like uh, if I want to practice, and um, um, yeah, I try. I, I try. I start with like some 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 scales and you know some some um, stuff like that, like just just to get my fingers going. Some more, some more like uh, mechanical stuff, you know, just uh -huh. just to get, just to get your your fingers going, and then I go into um, maybe a transcription that I'm working on or something that I'm working on mm -hmm. and 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 then um uh going to repertoire you know oh, i've been playing classical too i've been playing a lot of, i mean i've been uh -huh. I'm also re revisiting my uh my um bach my old uh, bach uh, two-part invention i don't know I, I you know so i've been doing like bach uh, work, you know a lot and playing some classical stuff so 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 i've been doing that classical music which kind of sort of so I get my fingers going, yeah, and and, and uh, then I work. You know, I've been working on this transcription and repertoire. Then I check some some. I check uh, some courses on Open Studio. And I check. Uh -huh. I check. Yeah, keys keys are probably. I yeah. think they are. Yeah, yeah. or yeah. Like maybe a Peter's a couple of yeah. Peter and albums. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, but but the important thing is like to to keep it like um, to not stay in one thing for too long, right? So you, you have like, yeah. so after a while you like stop doing what you're doing and then do something else because yeah. it gets repetitive. I, 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 in the past, I've been guilty of doing that. Like sort of like I, I spent too much time doing one doing thing. One thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I get, do the same. Yeah, yeah, and you get really good at that. And, but, but you don't. <laughs> But, you don't do it. but then you don't get to the tune that you want to compose, or the, or oh, working yeah. on working on your left hand or something. You know, you, you, you know, I know personally, I tend to stay away from the stuff that I that's really difficult for me. You know, I sort of I'll leave that yeah. until the until the end. All too often, I'm I'm getting better at not doing that, but nonetheless, I think it's it's sort of a yeah. human thing to you know first sit down, just play what you know, and and uh, of course you, you're you're not going to advance. Oh, and I've been trying to write because that's something I haven't been doing as much. You know, I haven't had time. You know, but but you have to put that. I think writing is another thing. I think you have to put that into your 
into your routine. You know, it has to be. It's not an inspiration thing. You know, you have to do it every day. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad you yeah. said that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sorry. So, yeah. No, no. So, so yeah. So, uh, so I've been. So, composition is one of the, one of the things. Um, I, it's just, it just got, it just got to do every day. And don't be, um, don't be uh, too critical of yourself. And just put down an idea that you have, and then, and, and or a few ideas, and then put it away and look at it again the next day and say, oh, this is pretty good, or this is not good, or, but you know, but it's a uh, yeah. I've been kind of neglecting that. Well, you know. Yeah, I'm going to encourage you not to neglect it because, you know, the two tunes that I know that you wrote that we recorded like several months ago that's going to be out on an amazing, uh, I can say that, I guess, album in about three or four weeks, everybody. It's um, uh, Elio uh, wrote two tunes that are on the album. Bebe is one. And yeah. it's it's clear is the other. It, it's clear being just a stunning ballad, man. I don't know where you came up with those that progression, the voicings. I mean, it's not logical. <laughs> it's just gorgeous, right? Thank you very much. Thank yeah, man. Much. Yeah, the um, album really, really. Thank you so much, Brian. You 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 know for organizing that and and producing it. Uh, you. Well, let's let, let's tell everybody as long as we're on it now. So um, back in when is it? What is this now? May, I guess. So last. Well, there's really an origin. We'll start at the late and go back. Um, we have uh, Elio Alves on piano, Omero Lubombo. Guys may have heard of him. Plays plays a little guitar. Oh, Omero uh, Omero Omero Lubombo. I'm not quite sure the last name. Mario Lubombo, Adrian Ribeiro on drums, who maybe is not as as well known to folks up here, but Adrian Ribeiro out of Sao, Sao Paulo, truly one of the great drummers in the history of Brazilian music, I've got to say, right? I mean, he's just an extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he's just a super happy dude <laughs> to have yeah. around. He's amazing. And Ruben yeah. Rogers, the great Ruben Rogers yeah. on bass, so we pulled uh, these these four gentlemen together. We recorded at Sound on Sound Studio here in beautiful Montclair, New Jersey. Uh, Thank you. Thanks uh, to you. Thanks uh, to you. Uh, well, whatever. And and uh, we got it mixed and mastered by some of the greats in the business. Greg Calvi mastered it, and uh, James Farber mixed it. And uh, so we're gonna, it'll be out probably in about a month or so. Uh, but on the album, what got us into this part of the discussion are two original tunes by Alio. Yeah. Um, one of which I we played in my quartet, a Bebe, uh, uh, which is, and I actually posted a little bit of my practicing on an Instagram account. God, I love that too, man. It's just, it's oh, just it's so amazing. But there's originals on there from Elio. Um, there's one original from Omero, and there's two originals from Edu. Uh, yeah. And then there's, um, oh boy, Caetano Veloso's uh, Bala con Bala. Uh, no. Uh, Trillus Urbanos. Trillus Urbanos, yeah. Yeah. What are they? What are we got? Um, Balacombala Bala also is a, a Bosco, Jean oh, Bosco, Jean Bosco, yeah, and Am, Amazon, Ri Amazon River, River, Amazon River, which is ama uh, amazing. Then, yeah, yeah, and then Deborah Gurgel is she? Is she like? Is she well well known in in, in Brazil? Because I never heard of her before, but. She's a well known, I mean, she's a jazz, jazz, yeah, she's a well known jazz player, like a uh, jazz player. She's, well, she, she's, she wrote a song for Romero, uh, beautiful, um, beautiful pro, she's pro she's Romero. That is, oof, that is a gorgeous yeah. song. Her, yeah. da her yeah. daughter's a singer, right? Is that right? Her daughter's a singer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Catch some stuff on YouTube, guys. You should check them out on YouTube. I mean, some beautiful, beautiful, a mother daughter thing, mother, and, mother uh, daughter, yeah, yeah. The, they the, the they can play. Sings. She plays great piano. The daughter sings great, and yeah. Uh, and um yeah yeah they have a group together. Yeah. Oh the yeah. Well, yeah the pro Romero. I mean remember you were trying to catch that well, that part that in the in this uh, you know, like in the second half of the tune. Yeah. And she sits there on YouTube playing it as if she's just like knitting a sweater. I mean it's like it's like the most relaxed thing. That's I know. A hard yeah. passage, super hard passage. It's a really hard passage. Yeah, on the, your left hand, and she's just sitting there like this, like the video. Yeah. She's just like, yeah, mm. ripping it. Yeah. <laughs> huh. How did you do that? How did you do that? Anyway, but it came out. It came out. Uh, it came out great. It came out great. And, uh, and, uh, so what? What do you think? Uh, 
you know, like, you know, you're one of the great players in the world today. I'm not just blowing smoke. We know that. And, and particularly coming out of Brazil, you have, you have a particular expertise there. What do you, what do you think as you look ahead in the next, I don't know, three months, six months, what do you, what, nine months, a year, I mean, in terms of right. clubs, clubs opening, concerts opening, uh, you know, con concert halls, um, um, you know, what's the business of, of music going to be for, for players such as yourself? Any sense? Well, I, you know, what, one thing I always think about is like, that this is going to be over one day, hopefully this is going to be over, right? Yeah. I mean, this, this is going to have to be over, like, like, you know, there, there, there will have to be a, a, a vaccine or something that they have and, and, and uh, it's going to come someday because otherwise, how, how are we going to be able to play again on a small, on a small yeah. like, you know, you have to have completely, you know, anyway, so this is going to be over on one day. But meanwhile, I don't know. I don't know if they can open some clubs or not open others or maybe open, uh, have concerts and uh, big halls and with fewer people. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I don't think anybody knows. I mean, w w one thing I think that's happening is like a lot of people are, are getting more into home home studios and, and more into home equipment. Uh, yeah. And uh, I've done a few of uh, this, um, you know, this videos. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm playing with people, but we're really putting the video together and editing together. Yeah. And, and then um, I'm learning more or recording myself. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about buying a mic and like maybe whenever I can tune my piano and like, so, so, you know, people are going to get better at the home studio things yeah. and, um, yeah. you know, maybe composing and, uh, and doing stuff like that. But uh, for the few next few months and year or, or year, but uh, uh, I really don't know. I don't think anybody yeah. knows. Nobody I don't think knows. Anybody, yeah. yeah I my agree. Wife, I mean, it, it's crazy to see uh, the, the quantity of stuff that's going on live right now. I mean, what they say, Omero is going to do something in a couple hours for Dizzy's Club, Coca-Cola. We have friends doing the NJ Pack stuff here in Newark. Jazz, Jazz at Lincoln Center is all over the live stuff. SF Jazz is all over the live stuff. Jazz Gallery here in town. Um, I mean, so many, there's so much. It's a, actually uh, quite amazing, right? It, but no, it, yeah, it's quite amazing. And Peter's, uh, and, and it's amazing what they do with the, with the yeah, yeah. what they do with the video editing and yeah, all that. yeah, That's, yeah. The, that, what what Ayla is referring to is on Friday nights. Peter Martin, uh, our partner at o Open Studio, um, at our studios in St. Louis. Peter's been going in every Friday night now. I think the last eight Friday nights and does a live solo concert, which is awesome. Highly recommended to everybody. Um, yeah. But we have three or four cameras in there. We're we're pretty fairly, fairly sophisticated, and the, but the cameras are being run by one of our colleagues at home in St. Louis yeah. through artificial intelligence. And so, so you know, you, you know, the camera zoom zooms in on Peter. It'll zoom back. It'll go around and stuff. It's pretty cool. I mean, besides besides Peter's playing, that's ridiculous, of course. But that's yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, Ru but Rudy Berger, I got to say hello to my old friend Rudolf Berger. Wow, nice to see you. That has been a while. So, so yeah. somebody asked me. Uh, somebody asked the name of the mother daughter. It was like Danny Danny Gurgel, right? Well, Danny Gurgel was the name of the 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 composer of that song. I I, I forget the name of the the, the daughter. But, Which uh, oh Deborah Deborah Deborah, Deborah Gurgel. Gurgel. I'm so sorry, Deborah. I'm sorry, I forgot you. Yeah, yeah. Deborah, Deborah yeah. wrote. Deborah wrote the song. Um, pro, pro Romero. Pro Romero and Dani Gurgel is her daughter. Yes, she's a wonderful singer. Yeah. And sorry, I blanked out on the names, but uh, okay. but uh, anyway, check them out. They are, they're really good. They I'm just really looking, good. I'm looking at some. I'm, I love. Yeah, I love seeing this. Uh, all those people from all. Look, Sri, Sri Lanka. Hello, hi, 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 hi. I'm just looking through here too. So, do you know? <laughs> do you know Rudy Berger, Rudolf Berger? He's saying, "What a coexistence." First, hello to a Alia. What a this is a gentleman <laughs> that a guy that I knew back. Oh my God, forty years ago in in Manhattan. Yeah, 
Of I'm course, sure. I know. I know. You do? Yeah. Wow. He, lived, he used to live in New York, no? He used to yeah, yeah. I think we, he and I met uh, in front of the bottom line. It's some uh, online at the bottom line. <laughs> I can actually, no, I, I, I'm pretty sure anyway. <laughs> wow. So, um, but let's talk about let's talk about Brazilian quote unquote Brazilian jazz for for a yes. second. So yes. so you know what's the origin story? What's what's the breathless version of of the Elio Alves origin story as a as a <laughs> pianist? You were you you didn't come out of the ground playing the piano, right? <laughs> no, no. Are you from and you're Sao Paulo, right? You were you were. I'm raised. from Sao Paulo. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. from Sao Paulo. Um, the biggest city in Brazil, but you know, big, sorry, I just wanted to say that much okay. better than New York, much better. No, just kidding. It's Brazil. it's the New York of of Brazil. Right? It's the New York of Brazil. Yeah, no, São Paulo is the is the financial capital. Is the yeah, and and Rio is is is, is the more tourist uh, touristic place and 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 a uh, beautiful place too. But the second second biggest city. Of course, super important for music and for every everything else. Um, so yeah, I grew up. I grew up in São Paulo, and um, I always played. You know, I always played um, classical music. You know, I grew up playing classical. My parents played, and so we had a piano at home. So you know, I, and I and I, 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 you know, I said, "Oh, you want to take piano lessons?" I said, "Sure." Yeah. Were Were your parents professional players or? No, they're not. They're not. They're like amateur. My my mother took like nine years. She did nine years of conservatory. So she actually she was actually really good. Whoa. She was actually really. Good. She doesn't play anymore, but she was she was a really good player. And um, but I, I'm you know, so I stopped playing. I just asked, you know, can I play? Were you a little guy, like seven or eight? Were you, were you a prodigy type player, or or did you? you was it more of a slow build or what? I've, yeah, I wasn't like yeah. I started early. I started very early. Mm -hmm. I started like at six, six, seven years old. And yeah. and, I, and, I, and I just remember I, this is funny because I asked my mother, oh maybe maybe I like to take lessons. And she's like, okay, okay. And she pretended she was doing something. And then the next day, the teacher was there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so I knew that she was thinking about it. Of course, you know, she good, had some, good, yeah. good mama. Yeah. Yeah. Even at six years old, I figure out yeah. okay. She, she kind of knew. She right. kind of had. She was th she was thinking about that, and um, and I played classical for a long time. And in, in back in, in you know in, in Brazil at around that time, um, uh, jazz it was like it was impossible. It was impossible to study jazz. It was like the only thing you know you either learn from your family or 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 if if you if your your parents were musicians or if you were uh, born into a musical family, either you learn like that or it was a really difficult to get, you know, there was no music education, it was really difficult, you know. So I went into the classical world, of course, and, uh, and um, you know, it was, was, was fine, but it was just not as much, I don't know, it was not, not as much fun for me. I was like, right. this is too serious, too. Like I was in this conservatory yeah. to dress up. You know? Right. And then I went to, then um, I went to a Chikoria concert one time. <laughs> that, that was Chikoria Gary Barton concert. So, so, so was Chick the first jazz artist that? So, what, what was your first listening experience to, to jazz? That, and then, I mean, that I started listening. You know, I started getting into like you know some some jazz rock stuff, like into like like uh, uh, um, uh, Weather Report a little bit. You know, so I said, oh, I said that I like. You know, a little bit of you know. Yeah. And and then um, and as you know, I went through the Beatles and Faze and the you know Rolling Stones and the you know and all the, I was like you know as a, all those other jazz bands from England. All, yeah. all those other jazz bands, yeah. yeah. Right. Ringo, Ringo, that great uh, jazz drummer, Ringo. Swing and Ringo. <laughs> uh -huh. And and um, but I was already into you know. Improvise music because for me improvisation was just this mystery because it was forbidden you know in like in classical world right. you know like, yeah kind of kind of you know like around that time and I saw I saw so this 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 concert that I saw Chikoria Gary Burton I was like I barely knew who Chikoria was I was just like oh okay yeah my my father had this 
tickets and I went to see and I was like, oh my God, you know, I was, I was yeah. like 13, 14. Yeah. I didn't understand everything that was going on, but there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of um, uh, the way they were interacting. It was just amazing. And they were, seemed to be having so much fun. Yeah. And, and just the, the the connection that they had, they would look at each other and do stuff. And I was like, how do they do that? How yeah. how is that even possible? Yeah. You know? And I was like, yeah, that's that sound that's a cool thing. Right. And and, um, and not, not not long after that, I saw um, I saw a concert by the great uh, the great and um, late great amazing Elise Regina, great uh, wow. mm. Brazilian singer. And um, she mm. was just amazing. And she also has, uh, uh, she had a quartet that was, you know, a band that was like very much uh, playing like uh, music, but kind of open, you know, kind of open and very uh -huh. uh, listening and just, uh -huh. you know, kind of almost like a jazz uh, jazz band. And um, so those two, those two concerts, like one after the other, that I was right. like, okay, I said, right. that's it. You know, that's it. Yeah, this is this is too much. And, so and you're like you're like 13, 14, 15 and that. Yeah, that. 13, 14, 15. And then um but then there was still like the question of like where am I gonna study or how am I gonna study? Because you know, Brazil was kind of limited on that on those things uh at, at that time, you know. And um That was like eighteen forty or something. <laughs> yeah, it was like in nineteen 20s. This is like the late 80s or the early 80s or late late 70s, something something like that, right? Yeah, it was like uh, uh, mid 80s. Yeah. Like, okay. Was like, yeah. yeah. And, and and then um um the only choice really was um you know uh it was to to no, to learn to learn that there, there were like one a few teachers there, just one school. There's Zimbo Trio, this uh um, piano they still has a school there. It was a private, a private, private uh, school that, that was very limited uh, in terms of time. You know, they were great, but it was not. It's not a college. The only choice was to go to Berkeley, and you know, and my mom just, just you know, she, she organized everything, and then, and, wow. and through anyway. Long well, you must, short, you must have been playing. Were there, were there any gigs for you in Sao Paulo? Jazz gigs as a trio or Quartet prior to going to Berkeley, or, or, or not? no, not really. I stopped, no. you know, I stopped playing with my friends and stuff. But yeah. uh, towards the end, I mean, just before I went to Berkeley, yes, yeah, yeah, I stopped playing a few, a few little gigs. And was 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 Wayne's album out yet? Native Dancer at that time. I'm trying to put the dates. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> this was mid '80s, '84. Um, yeah. yeah, Native yeah. Native yeah. Dancer, I think was yeah. But yeah. I've just it was so. Funny for me, for me, it was just like uh, it was just I was just how much fun I was gonna I was having, you know, playing um, playing jazz. You know, because I was like, this is so much fun and the interaction and the connection. You know, I can hang with my friends and nothing against classical music, but the way it was presented to me at the time, it was a much more like you know regimented thing. Yeah. It was just like I was like, oh, you know, I don't yeah. know. And and I was just like, wow, this is just incredible. I can have fun with my so, friends. And, so you know. when you went to Berkeley, did you bring to Berkeley ex expertise in playing, you know, samba, bossa nova, afoche, uh, bio, uh, all these di all the different rhythms, or did you sort of work on that at Berkeley and beyond? Well, I I think I had everything, but like, you know. Like, I had already that I heard, you know, everything that I heard all my life. Radio used to be actually FM FM radio at the time in Brazil used to be really good, and they used uh, to play like really good stuff, and I used to uh, hear some really good things. Uh, and and uh, just going to you know uh, carnival parties and stuff, I did. I was right. I was I was listening to the to the to the percussion. I was like, "Ah, oh, that sounds cool," you know, the way the percussion right. was interesting and stuff. So it, it, that got in there somewhere. Right. Yeah. But you you came up out of Berkeley, and it wasn't too long after that that you, I mean, you were a pretty in in demand player for straight up, if you will, 
American jazz. I hate to say, I, I won't say it that that way, but you know, straight ahead. I mean, you were with Joe for Joe Henderson for a while. How how quickly was your gig with Joe after? Oh yeah, Berkeley. That, it wasn't that long, right? No, that was that was really that was actually really cool because I moved to New York. Um, you know, uh, right after after uh, after Boston. Um, Actually, with the connection of um, the only person I knew in New York was Claudio Rodici, the late great Claudio, uh, Rodici, amazing yeah. trumpet player. Claudio Rodici. Actually, someone in the comments referenced the trumpets uh, here in Montclair. Oh, yeah. There used to be a jazz club called Trumpets, and I know you and Omero and all all kinds of cats. I, I was there that night. Uh, did a, a benefit uh, for him uh, pri prior to his passing. Oh yeah, that yeah. was a great. That was a great night in music. Yeah, anyway, Claudio was a you know super important mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of this whole process because he encouraged me. I wanted to go anyway. I wanted to come anyway to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was a young young guy in, in in Boston, but he was like, "Hey, call me when you're there." We did a gig in Boston when he was there. He said, "Call me." So, you know, it's always great to have Claudio's number. You know, if you have if you if you get a one number in New York, you know, you can <laughs> yeah. And and uh, he he really um, I so I called on him as when I moved and he introduced me to all the guys all the, the whole Brazilian you know the whole Brazilian jazz scene yeah. at the time and including you know, the Duca da Fonseca, Nilson Mata, Romero Lubando. Yeah. I met those guys you know all through yeah. Claudio. Oh, okay. And, and um, but stylistically, you know, the the difference between playing. You know, straight up Brazilian rhythms and playing, you know, uh, straight up jazz rhythms, right? You know, if you will, right? Modern jazz, right? Like the way Chick plays, Herbie plays, McCoy. You know, um, you know, you. I'm, how did that come about in your playing, or how? Well, not how. That's a dumb question. But I, I assume that sort of you blossomed. In, in that playing at Berkeley, and then when you moved to New York, because you got a call from Joe Henderson to play with Joe Henderson, and I, I don't, I, I'm imagining you didn't get a call from Joe because of the way you played Bossa Nova, <laughs> or, yeah. or, right? Yeah. So I just yeah, wonder I that I wonder about that connection, you know, between the Brazilian oh, yeah. styles and the American styles. And the American style, yeah. No, I, I you know, I actually, it's so funny because I never, I never. Um, you know, I wanted to play jazz. That, that was the thing I wanted to play. I wanted to play straight ahead jazz. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. thinking so much about, you know, the Brazilian uh, rhythm yeah. so much around that time. I was just like, okay, yeah. But it was something, of course, that was in the back of my head. You know, I was like, yeah. I mean, it was there. You know, it was in my, yeah. my hard drive. Yeah. And and uh, um, uh, so when I moved to New York, I just kind of fell into the, you know, it, it, I, I think New York pro probably more than than Boston, perhaps for me at, around that time. It, it has more like it had more of a, you know, like it would put put me in a category. So oh, this guy is a Brazilian jazz guy. He's from Brazil. Yeah. And he play. He can improvise. So he's a Brazilian jazz. Yeah. Player, you know. Uh -huh. And, and um, it's you. You have certain. I know it's not a complaint. This is not a complaint. But in New York, there's a little bit more labeling. You know, labeling and uh, and um, which which I'm not. I mean, I'm not complaining at all. And that this gig that um, the uh, Joe Joe record uh, all all Brazilian music um, all Joe Bean records. You know, this. Um, Double right. rainbow score. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. right. Right when I moved to New York, it was like in 1994. Oh, that was good timing. Okay. So if the timing couldn't have been bad. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Jobim was actually supposed to play on the record, on this record. He was, I mean, CD. He was supposed, but he got sick and then he died that same year. He died in 94. Mm. But he was supposed to. To play on the rec on that CD and um, Eliane Elias and Eliane Elias played and Herbie played the other half and Christian plays Christian plays bass on uh, that that album Christian yeah. McBride plays yeah. the other half yeah um, so, so you so you did get the call because of the way you play Boston over then no I, I mean, did 
No, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. No, no, that that's cool. No, no. And then later on, like when they on the tour came up, like yeah. Eliani couldn't Eliani couldn't make it, and then they called me, you know, and I and I was like, oh yeah, I think I can. <laughs> I love to, I love to do that, yeah. and and and, uh, and and it was like a dream, you know, because it's like I'm playing my music. I'm playing, I mean, my music. I'm playing music from my country with yeah. a jazz master, yeah, like uh, yeah. Joe Henderson, you know. Yeah. So I mean, what what, what can can you want? What more can you ask? As a young player, yeah. moving to New York, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just remember my first gig. My first gig with Joe, um, they told me like the day the day of the gig the, in the morning. They said, "Oh, so it's gonna be you half of the show and Herbie half of the other half." <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and Herbie was gonna play half, and I was gonna play the other half. I said, like, "Okay," but I was already so nervous, you know, just to you know, just to play with Joe and right, right. To be, I mean, I was a young. I just moved to New York, like yeah, know. yeah, very cool. And you know, meeting, but Herbie was incredibly young. Uh, we got a we got a couple of questions here from the. Okay. Let's see. Uh, well, first of all, any more plans for more courses at Open Studio? So the short answer to that is yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we're you know there's this little pandemic that's going on right now. So we're it's a little pandemic thing, right? right. So, no, but I'm I've been thinking about like an improvisation, uh, imp improv improvisation in brazilian music so so using the brazilian rhythms mm -hmm. more geared toward towards like mm -hmm. so, so talk talk a little bit to those who are listening who don't maybe don't know your course at Op open studio now just the structure where you you go through the you know bossa and samba and afoche i love that word afoche <laughs> and and just 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 a quick pricey of uh, some summary of of sure. what you take the um the student through in that sure. So, so we have like a, a Brazilian, it's an overview of Brazilian music. So we have like um, some, so we're dividing samba, bossa nova, baião, apoche, and, and, and um, per, perdito alto, I think. And partido alto, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm yeah. sorry, I forgot, I forgot because partido alto is like a. It comes a, before, yeah. It's related to the samba. So, if, yes. So, so, yeah. Um, Samba being the samba being the mother, you know, mother rhythm in, in through uh, all the, uh, those bossa, the bossa nova uh, and partido alto, and then you have bossa nova uh, 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 Bayon being one of the northeast uh, rhythms from um, from the northeast of Brazil, yep. and Af and Afro being the other one from the north. So 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 yeah. samba is from São Paulo, Rio, and uh, bossa. I'm sorry, Bossa, Bayon and Afrochef from the Northeast. Yeah. And so those are the five. Um, and it's so and, and so you take it through with a with a, a a lesson itself, just with you at the piano. And then we yeah. have then and of course you have a cup couple of ringers in there backing you up in a trio, which includes the aforementioned Omero Labambo on guitar and the yeah. aforementioned Adi Ribeiro on drums. And yeah. Saint St. Louis's own amazing bass player Bob Debu on bass. Bob Debu. So, and then you guys would go ahead and demonstrate, and and there's a music minus one track for each of the things. It's really quite an amazing course. Highly recommend it. To thank you. And yeah, and, and, and th oh sorry, and thanks to you because I remember. I, 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 you, sorry, you you I said. Um, what 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 would be the good rhythm session? Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. you're like, oh, you know, and I and I and I make the names, and you say, okay, let's <laughs> let's work on that. Uh, and, uh, and what what I've learned, as old as I've gotten, what I've a, a producer's job is to say yes and make it happen. Okay. That's the <laughs> that's like, the, you know that's uh, the idea. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say okay. There's a guy you know named Edu, he lives in Brazil, and a, yeah. and Homero. This Guy Homero and you and, it, and it, yeah, thank you so much. And I mean, a dream, a dream band and Bob and Bob did a fantastic job. So it, uh, Isabella Mendes Lira uh, just says, "I just bought the course recently through Open Studio. It's amazing. Love it." Uh, so that's nice to hear. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Obrigado. Obrigado. <laughs> Let's see what else we got going. Oh. Um, 
Ricardo Peculis says, you mentioned Zimb Zimbo Trio, Zimbo, Z-I-M-B-O. Yeah. Did you have a chance to study at C-L-A-M, CLAM? Yes. They Clam, were yeah. teaching jazz in the 70s in Sao Paulo. I had a friend, Fernando Mota, studying there at the time. That's exactly the school I'm talking about, CLAM. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, yeah. And that's, that's, that's actually, yeah, that was probably the only organized school in Brazil at the time for jazz, you know, that uh, they had, uh, or, you know. And Eliane, Eliane, Elias, Eliane Elias, uh, is still there. Uh, and uh, it, it was like, it was uh, the place to, to study at the time. Uh, Milton Godoy, a fantastic um, piano player, uh, is still there teaching. And, uh, and Zimbo Trio, is, that, that's some amazing trio that everyone should check from, from they've been around for a long time. And, we, and the Brazilian rhythm section with um, Paolo Polini on bass. Huh? Are you, are you, the guys that we have um, that you, I think, I thought you or maybe it was Edu introduced us to, uh, and we, we brought their course in uh, Brazilian rhythm. Oh, Paulinho, Paulinho. Yeah, Paulinho. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and those guys, man, that's an amazing group. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, they're, oh, they're amazing. Yeah, those, those guys are fantastic. So, but, but but between his course or that course, that court, it's a it's a Brazilian jazz quartet course. Yeah, music minus one, um, based out of Sao Paulo that we have your course, which is awesome, and then the aforementioned Adi Ribeiro, we have his full drumming course. So mm -hmm. you know, we're we're so grateful to ha and and happy to to have such a breadth of of. Um, teaching you know in, you. in yeah. brazilian that's a, that's another another amazing amazing drama i mean this, you know edu ribeiro and 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 uh and uh celso almeida celso, celso almeida. Almeida. yeah 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 he is a fantastic fantastic drummer uh swings like he's a mr swing <laughs> I mean, yeah and uh and uh, anyway, I love I love the way he plays. And, the way all of us play. And yeah. some someone here mentions uh, one of my f most favorite musicians on the planet, just with a question mark, uh, Gismonte. So, Eg Egberto Gis Gismonte. Are you? Yes. Can you talk about him at all? I mean, he's his guitar playing. First of all, is awesome. But his his piano playing. The, you know that one album he has. He has several, but solo. And yeah. there's something about his. I I would I would use the word spiritual with a small s, but that that's sort 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 of a loaded term. But it's just such a heartfelt, gorgeous, gorgeous sound in his his touch. You know, I I can tell yeah. it's him after like you know one you know one bar. You know, and you know not not a lot of pianists have that have that ability. Any, I'm just curious what your experience. Uh, perhaps with his music has been over all these years. Oh, this, um, no, I love him. He's one of my favorite, uh, absolutely a fav favorite uh, musicians, uh, contemporary, um, you know, he, he makes everything together, all the yeah. Brazilian influences, and also together with classical music. Uh, he plays, a, he, he also comes a little bit from that class classical background. Uh. And, and, and uh, he's an amazing piano player and guitar player. Yeah. Which, which is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it's oh. yeah, and and uh, and he, 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 you know, his compositions have like uh, all rhythms of Brazil, all from, all from from all different parts. And if I mention him, I have to mention also Hermeto Pascual. He's under the same um, umbrella, like you know, contemporary yeah. multi instrumentalist Hermeto Pascual, amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Plays piano and plays um, many other instruments. Yeah, didn't we record? Uh, Beb he did Bebe. Too? We recorded his tune called Bebe, but we decided to use your tune Bebe yeah. on the album. Although it, and, it will be available as an extra cut, uh, for the Hermeto Pascual. And actually, it's a funny thing because you mentioned Gilberto because we did like a video. We were working on a little video, a little pandemic video at home with uh, with Homero and Edu and oh, Ruben. Good. Uh, okay. And we're doing a Gilberto, a Gilberto tune. We're doing Loro. Is a, you know, oh, so. you're doing Loro. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah that, so, that. Yeah, good, good. We're still working on it. So, so, but, but uh, 
Well, you've got a couple of weeks before I we, the album come, comes out, so let's uh, let's let's make sure you get it done beforehand so we can promote it. Everyone <laughs> yeah, is going to want a copy. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, uh, we're getting we're getting uh, good at uh, playing a cappella, playing a, you know, playing. A... So here's a here's a question from Costas Cons. I I don't want to butcher his name. It is an honor to be here. Elio, how do how do you start an improvisational solo on a simple tune? Your solo have incredible beginnings. That's oh. interesting. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I I do know that's funny that the this question came up because I I worked on, I, I think a lot about the beginning of the solo. I actually do. I, I had this great teacher. Um, they used to tell me, you know, just um, Mike Longo, actually, you know, Michael. You, I know yeah. You, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. I, I studied with him for a long time on a bed. I mean, I'm, he passed away. Of I know, COVID. he just it's COVID, I know, yeah. man. Yeah, so, he was, he was, yeah, anyway. And it's funny that you, 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 thank you, yeah, that you mentioned about the beginning of the songs, because he used to talk about that all the time, you know, so have a, you know, when you, when you're soloing, it's like you are you're giving a speech or you you it's public speaking you know you're gonna you have an opening statement and then you have a counter statement or or whatever like a and then you go on from there you know so you have like a you open with an idea so it sort of gives you the flavor of or the general idea of what the rest of the solo is gonna sound like you know so so uh he used to talk about that like a lot, you know, and also like about like really trying to on the first few bars or first first uh, chorus, really try to lock in as much as you can with the with the groove with the band. Mm. So you're really in it, you know, mm. you're really in it, and then you establish yourself. You know, take your time, and uh, thank you. Yeah. So and I work at that, and then of course work, you know, the middle. Nobody cares about the middle. No, just kidding. You know. Mm. But uh, but but that that's well, kind of uh, let's talk. Let's but don't don't forget the end. So I, but the I, end. I, yeah, I love what I'm hearing. Yeah. So you want to end on an end on a on a reasonable, uh, 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 you know, logical way to and kind of get a crescendo and end. You know, uh, so the beginning of the end, the end are super. And, uh, the end is super, important, of course, but I think the beginning, because you know that's your opening thing. That's when you first, you know, you say, "Hi, I'm here. I'm gonna present this to you yeah. with this sort of uh, uh, um, tools that I'm presenting to you at the moment, you know." And then you go on from there, you know, and and then people go, "Oh, okay, cool," and and then you know, it, it catches their their attention, and then you know. And, and, and puts you on a good place, yeah. puts you in a good uh, um, frame of mind, you know, to yeah. continue and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you know, with students, I think, you know, one often hears, you know, they, they jump right in, right after the last soloist ends and they, and they might jump right in with a really fast line or a, no, or, no. Or, or, or a really high temp or volume and stuff. and. Um, uh, it, without having given themselves a chance to breathe and giving the listener a chance to, to um, you know, the transitions. I it's one of the, for, for me. It's one of the most attractive things about this music is, are the transitions between um, the, the the statement of the melody, the first um, soloist, that soloist into the next solo. Those eight, those two, four, eight bar transitions, and what's the band doing, and how how are they incorporating? What's going to come come next, you know? And then you sort of, you know, like the like you say, the mid middle section. Who cares? So people are getting a yeah. drink or whatever they're doing, you know. Yeah, the middle section, uh, of course, is important. You want to have, yeah, yeah. you want to, you want to make sense. You want to, you don't want to get repetitive, but you want to, you know, you want to. You're telling a story. You 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 giving a speech. You're telling a, you know, yeah. I mean, not a speech, but you you're telling a story, and and uh um. But but that opening statement is just so important, you know. It, it, it puts um, I, I think an opening statement and a and a 
and a sort of like a, a answer to that, you know, a, a rebuttal to to that, uh, you know, to that first idea, you know, a clear, clear melodic idea, and yeah. then and then um, um, a rebuttal, and then go from go on from there. I think it's very important. Just checking out our uh, oh, there's a mention of Tony, you know, Tony. <laughs> How do you say? Oh, yeah. What the yeah, yeah, yeah. Relative to Mr. Berger. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a good question, Costas. Costas, um, yeah, yeah. That's very good. Very good question. Um, what, what, uh, the, another question here we have, but what kind of strategies or strategy do you use to memorize? A complicated piece, like for oh. example, when we when we were doing the recording, you know, some of the music, especially that A Do brought, right? I mean, as for a drummer, that cat writes some serious, yeah. seriously complicated melodic lines and and stuff. Yeah. But that, and then of course Deborah's uh, tune, Gurgel, is it Gur Gur Gurgel? Yeah, Gurgel. I mean, yeah. So and you were reading initially, right? And then, of course, you put it away. But what's your process there? Um, um, of course, you want to hear a lot, right? I, I was listening to that all the time, you know, and like you listen to the melody all the time uh, uh, to, in order to you know, familiar, familiarize myself with the melody. But I think it like for, that's an interesting question for, um, for learning chord changes, you know, for learning chords and, uh, and structures, you have to um, think about the functions, right? Like you, do, you have to analyze a little, analyze the tune in terms of like what are the function on in, in the harmony uh, of the song, and and learn like that, like you know, I'll say okay, so I have a two five one, a three five, three six two five one instead of learning chord by chord you know right, so, right, so, right. so so you learn sections like that yeah but in terms, like you, you, you first analyze the song a little bit yeah you know, architecturally like, architecturally so, so i'll say okay, so a section i'm gonna have a one six two five then i'm gonna go two five one two 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 four and then i'm gonna go back to to right. to, to the to the root and and learn yeah. like you know, because if you look chord by chord by chord by chord, you yeah. know, you never learn it. And of course, learning it the way you describe, that's what allows you to play in multiple keys. <laughs> you know, exactly. So. Exactly. Which, which we have, which is something that we have to do all the time, like being yeah. piano players, you know, I mean, playing with singers, yeah. which I, I work with, you know, a lot. Mausha. And, and yeah. Mausha, yeah. yeah. Mausha. Uh, great Moshe Dine and Rosa Passos. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful Bra Brazilian singer Rosa Passos and Joyce, Joyce Moreno. Um, you know, I've been enjoying your Instagram feed. All you people around this call should check out Elio's Instagram. You've been posting in, during shel sheltering at home a lot of old photographs back <laughs> from you back in the day, right? With Rosa pa Passos and, and, all, and Ma Mausha. And, and actually, um, you, I guess you did a gig at a Mesro with Moshe, right? And was there a yeah. guitar Because um, yeah. Spike, yeah, Spike Wilner um, played that. I, I think he posted it on Instagram. And, really? He did? Yeah, 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 it wasn't the whole gig, but it was like uh, several minutes of, of, yeah. the, of the stuff. That was, that was Guilherme Monteiro, great guitar player. It was oh, yeah. Mingo and Guilherme Monteiro. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a really good guitar player from Brazil. Uh, so yeah, I'm spoiled with singers because she's great. Yeah. 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 I think she's great. She's um uh, she sang with uh, the man himself Jobim mm -hmm. for like ten years, wow. and, and then um, I play a lot with Rosa Passos. You know she's she's fantastic. Yeah. Um, um, there's a actually there's an album called Amoro Amorosa that's Amorosa. fantastic. It's a beautiful album that I play on, and I played on on um, on a couple of others of hers with, with Celso. Celso is her drummer. Celso so we. Uh, we, we will put a link down below or somehow we'll make sure that everyone listening has your discography um, or at least a partial discography of what, of what, uh, yeah. And Joyce, and Joyce Moreno. I'm and Joyce Moreno, right, right. 
Yeah, I'm on a bunch of her records. She's amazing. She's a great, great guitar player. So is so is uh, so is Hosa. and uh, you know, and I'm I'm very very spoiled with the yeah. with the Brazilian singer, with the Brazilian singer. So and, so the, here's a dumb question: do, do you do you have a preference like? Like if you had your dream gig, is it a solo piano gig? Is it a trio gig? Is it a is it an accompanying a singer gig? You know, or or or, or it's all good. Just depends on what's coming next. You know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's all it's all good. You know, but yeah. at this point, like anything is good, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A give digital a gig, gig, you know. Give me a gig. Give me a gig. Yeah. Any, any time. Um, no, I love playing trio. That's my favorite, you know, playing trio gigs and stuff like that. I love, yeah. but you know, but playing with the singers and and uh, also that I mentioned and others. And I, I I did a few gigs with the amazing uh, Diane Reeves on her project, uh, the Brazilian project that she has with uh, Yvonne Lins. I mean, can't go wrong with that. And I played with um, yeah. a number of. I mean, how can you you know masters? Yeah. And 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 I played with a. Again, like I said, I'm very spoiled with the Brazilian singers. I play with Gal Costa and major Brazilian singers. And and um, are you, are you able to while you're sheltering at home? Are you able to connect with a, a, a lot of your musician friends at least on Zoom or phone? Or do you find that the community is you know the, you know the vibe is strong, or do you feel isolated? I mean, what's what's the um, uh, I think it's, I think people are trying to connect, right? People are really trying to, to, to you know, to, to connect and do, yeah. we're doing Rosa, Rosa Passos. I did a video with, I did a video with Rosa Passos. Oh, did you a, did? Oh. Yeah, I, 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 did, I had to play a keyboard because my, the piano was out of tune with the guitar. Uh, but we did, we did a video together. Is that, uh, did you po post that on your Instagram feed? I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. All right. Where does she I, live? Is she does she live in Brazil or is she here? She lives in Brazil. Yeah, she okay. lives in Brasilia, in the capital. The so, capital. how did you guys? Did you do it asynchronously, or, or, or did did you? How did yeah, you? No, she recorded first and then sent it to me. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. So, so it was not. Uh, yeah, I guess people are not. Uh, I'm not. I, you can't do it together. You can't do live. You know. You know. You can do it together, but it's. I don't think it's ready for prime time. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's a little bit of a, a, a lag. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lag. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is which is unfortunate. Because um, I mean, because if, if we're in this thing for you know a significant length of time, right? Um, <laughs> you know, the ability to play sync sync synchronously is, is going to be more important. You know, um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so we have. Uh, let's just take a quick look here. Fort Collins, Colorado. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, we got Ontario, we got Canada's in the house. Wow, fantastic! You are, um, you, you are, you are beloved, my friend. Huh? Yeah, I have people from all over. Well, let's just put out a let's let's put out a last call for any if anybody has any questions for you. Yeah, I'm thinking about the time. Are we? Um, yeah, we're sort of we're sort of on the on the back end. Brazilian uh, Dream, Costas mentioned uh, Brazilian Dreams. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful album too that I did with uh, New York Voices and uh, Paquito. Yeah, Paquito Rivera is another one that amazing musician yeah. that I work. Yeah. I know you work a, really often with uh, Duduka Van Monseca and Neil Samata, right? Um, yes. You know, yes. Yeah. yeah, we we have you a seem, three. You seem to have a pretty steady gig at that um, uh, on what Park and Forty? What is it? Park and Fortieth? What's that hotel gig there? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Kitano, Kitano Hotel, yeah. Uh, uh, Kit, Kit Kitano, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I have a gig there. In a, I have a gig there in October, hopefully. <laughs> with <laughs> with uh, <laughs> a fantastic band that I'm that I you know a different band that I hope to do a lot more playing with. Um, uh -huh. With 
uh, with Duduka and uh, and uh, Peter Washington. Oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, what he's Bill Charlap spaces, right? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's in October. I, I, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm like, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we'll. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know. Right? We don't know what we don't know, man. Uh, all, all we can do is just, you know, everybody stay safe, stay, stay safe, safe, stay home, you know, do, yeah. do, do what you got to do uh, to try to put, put this genie back in the bottle. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. So I, and, are, you, are you staying home? Are you, uh, are you I'm, home? I'm home a lot. I mean, I'm very fortunate. One of the fortunate crew that, you know, we have, you know, food, shelter, and clothing. Um, um, I live in a nice area um, of the world, so you know we have plenty of uh, social activity online and on our block, and you know, so we can get out for go for long walks and stuff. And I'm living here with my wife and my uh, daughter. Um, we have family that lives across the street, so you know we're we're lucky, and and uh, and we're, I'm incredibly grateful for you know for 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 that. So it's not unlike you, uh, you know, with your wife and kids there, and the ability to get into the park and stuff. So you know, I just uh, you know we should prob probably wrap this up, but I want to thank everybody who who, thank who you. came. Yeah, yeah, and uh, um, thank you. Thank oh, you so much. My Thank pleasure. You. Elio, it's so good to see your smiling face, dude. I mean, Thank you so much. Yes, you know, yes. I mean, one of the things that was, so, I'll tell everybody, that was just so incredible about doing the album with you guys is your smiling face, Omero's smiling face, Adu's smiling face, Ruben. I mean, there was such incredible joy and joie de vivre, and it was like the atmosphere was just celebratory the, the entire time. Um, and, and, and and then everyone was trying to be a comedian. So yes, yeah, so Ruben, Ruben, especially Ruben. Ruben yeah, yeah, right, especially Ruben. Yeah, really. But and it was thanks, such, and, all, and all thanks to you. You you no, you, no, best, no, no. you put it together. And and, and uh, thank you everybody at Open Studio. And you guys have been the best. You guys are the best. And uh, thank you so much. Of uh, very very happy. Thank you. And uh, the next thing they hear from us will be um, when the album is released, it's going to be called At Play. Yes. Love everybody. Peace, safe uh, living, <laughs> and be yeah. well. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.